World of Tanks NC-70. Uh, this is a new tank in the Polish tech tree uh, that is in the super test. It's a tier 10 tank destroyer. has a new mechanic. The mechanic is a new type of ammunition and barrel, uh, which causes damage to be different depending on the range that you're firing from. And I reviewed the statistics. I'm going to say that this tank is really nothing special. It's not an overpowered vehicle. Uh, we'll go through it real quick. So there's uh, three different types of shells. It looks like the AP, the APCR, and HE. The first two will have different damage depending on the distance that you're firing at. And the final one is a typical HE round uh, that's found on other vehicles in the game. Now, even though I say that these are typical shells, they are a new mechanic. So they will not behave the same as other APCR rounds. It says here is shell damage at 50 meters, 800, 800, 800. So obviously 800 damage is one of the highest in the game. Uh, there's only a few vehicles that do more than 800 damage, such as the FV215B183. And then we have a closer range, which is 275. This is about half your spotting distance or your view range, about half your view range. And it does 550, 550, and 800. And then at greater than 500 meters, which is at the uh, edge of your draw distance, 300, 300, 300. So the shell damage at less than 50 meters, 800 damage. That is your, sp your um, proximity spotting distance, which is the blue circle you see around your vehicle if you have it enabled on your minimap. So you have to be really close to the enemy a few tank lengths away, short distance, in order to get that damage. Most of your shot's going to be mid-range, so you're going to be looking at 550 or 300. The armor penetration, you got 290, 320, 85. Okay, so the 290 is good. This is a Tier 10 vehicle. A lot of Tier 10 vehicles are a little bit under 290 for their armor value. There's a few that are at 300 and very, very few at around 350. When I say very few, I mean there could be four or five vehicles that have 350 for their armor, the hull armor or the turret armor, and they're almost always special vehicles that you have to win um, highly skilled like the Chieftain or the Object 260 or the 279E, etc. So the mouse, I believe, has 270 and maybe the Type 5 Heavy has 290. So you should be able to penetrate most vehicles with the regular rounds at least 50% of the time. The 320, I believe, is a little bit low. These are the gold rounds. I think that the average for Tier 10 is 340. And the reason why is that Tier 10, every vehicle has kind of the same penetration and kind of the same armor. Uh, it's all balanced out. It's different than the other tiers. So 320 is going to be a little bit under. People are probably not going to be firing the 320 rounds as often. And the 85 millimeters is definitely above the average. So there was a time when it wasn't, and they redid all the HE, and most vehicles are at 50 millimeters of penetration 85 is higher than average uh, the best tanks do around 100 or 110 millimeters and there's not that many as only a few vehicles get into 85 and above so it's rare to have 85 millimeters for he damage however the issue you're going to have is that for tier 10 and Tier 9 and Tier 8, you're talking about the sides of vehicles or the rear of vehicles. 
or the roof, or if you get a lucky shot underneath, which I've seen done before in the training room, but I've never been able to do it in a game. Maybe you'll be able to splash this. Does it have the burst radius? Maybe you'll be able to splash it like if he's in a in a building and there's a wall next to him and you hit the wall and it will damage his vehicle from the side. I don't know. I have done that in the training room. So the penetration, it's you know good for the regular rounds, but otherwise doesn't matter. The shell velocity is 1,700, 2,000, and 1,000. This shell velocity is very high. The tanks with the highest shell velocity are usually around 1,300. And typical for APCR is 1,000. So these shells are going to be firing twice as fast because it has a special rifled gun, uh, which you might be able to see over here. That means that you don't have to give as much lead uh, when you're aiming at a fast-moving vehicle. You'll be able to use the auto-aim more often, and it's going to be better for players who have a high latency. Uh, the 1,000 uh, meters per second for the HE rounds is actually pretty high also. And there's prob there might be an arc with this. The reload time is 13.7 seconds. Obviously, it's not that great. It's kind of low. Aiming time, 2.5 seconds. It's not good. It's, it's kind of average, but it's a bad average. If it were a little bit lower, that would be really nice. The dispersion, 0.35, that's really good dispersion. Uh, that's going to be put you in the top 5% of all tanks in the game with that type of dispersion value. Like the best you're going to see is 0.34 or 0.33. The gun elevation angle, minus 7 degrees and uh, 15 degrees. So the gun elevation is determined by the breach because there's a roof on the vehicle, it cannot um, go beyond the roof. So that restricts um, gun elevation and gun depression. Gun traverse speed, 26 degrees per second. This does not have a turret, so you'll have to, my advice is you lock the hull when you move the gun around. Ammo capacity, 60 pieces. If you look at your reload time, 13.7 seconds, it's three per minute, I'm sorry, four per minute, 15 minute game. That is <laughs> 60 rounds. So you'd have to fire continuously to fire all your rounds in a 15 minute game. So you're going to have enough ammo. And my advice is you do 20, 20, 20, because you're unlikely to fire 20 shots. So you're going to do 20 regular rounds, 20 APCR, and 20 HE. Maximum forward speed is 45. The backward speed of 15 is, is rather slow. Uh, the 45 is kind of... Um, it's low. I'm going to just put it down as being low. 900 horsepower is okay. Specific power, 16. Hull traverse speed is 30 degrees per second. Total hit points is 2,000. The hull armor, you've got 200 for the front, 60 for the side. You've got 200 for the front, 70 for the side, and 60 for the rear. And the 200 value is probably the upper hull and not the lower hull. What does that mean? That means that every tier 10 tank will be able to penetrate you with any round that they fire, and the chance of penetration is almost 100%. And for tier 9, you're going to be up there also. A lot of vehicles are going to be able to penetrate you from the front with tier 9. Once you get into tier 8, most vehicles in tier 8 have... 220 penetration. So they'll still be able to penetrate you maybe about half the time.
and those are the vehicles you're going to be up against. So that means almost every vehicle is going to be able to penetrate you from the front, certainly from the side and from the rear. So you're probably going to want to angle it on a slope a little bit if you can. Or what you do is you angle it so that the gun is pointing at an angle. Uh, if, if the gun were pointing straight, your vehicle would be in, at an angle in its positioning so that they get a, a bounce off of the front. Uh, the view range is 370. There's nothing good about that view range. Uh, I believe the average is 390 for that tier. So the view range means that you've got the commander's viewport and if the tank is short in stature, uh, it doesn't really see as far. Obviously, it's a small difference, but a taller vehicle usually have ha a taller vehicle usually has a longer view range. Then the signal the signal range is 730 meters, which means if you park in the corner and the map is a thousand by a thousand, in a perfect world, you'd be able to reach. Uh, almost every you you should be able to reach every other vehicle tier tier eight nine and ten. There's going to be exceptions because stock vehicles in tier eight might have radios that are only three hundred or four hundred um, signal range. There's going to be a few players. However, I know from playing the game that you're going to reach everybody in the higher tiers unless they have damage to their radio. And if they have damage to the radio, it's probably going to be only temporary. When you are on a map like Frontline or the Grand Battles, you're going to be out of signal range. That's when it's going to make a difference. However, because the battles are spread out, I've rarely seen any um, information that needed to be sent on the minimap where being out of signal range really made a difference. There's going to be exceptions to obviously some SPGs, but even SPGs have a... a maximum firing range so the signal range for light tanks etc basically that's beyond your view range so it's really not going to matter because even if you did see the tanks you won't be able to fire at them in most game modes uh, so the signal range won't matter so much this is a tech tree vehicle as far as i know and it's a tier 10, which means you probably don't have an option for another radio. But also, by the time your crew members get up there, you'll be able to improve this with the signal boosting. Because the view range is 370, uh, you're probably going to want to boost that with recon and situational awareness. Because you really want to get to your full view range, which uh, was 445. Uh, so in terms of what equipment you're going to use on this vehicle, the reload time is not good. It's not the worst. You might want to consider a gun rammer because of the fact that you're going to be sniping. I would use the uh, device that makes the aiming circle smaller or a gun laying drive. Don't so much recommend... V-stab, because this is a vehicle that's usually stationary when you fire, uh, which would be the gun laying drive. If you're moving and firing, or moving just before firing, you would use the uh, vertical stabilizers. Uh, it's possible you would use binoculars. Binoculars will increase your spotting damage, which means you will get more experience per game. Uh, you could potentially spot another 300 damage per game. It's going to kick your experience up another 50 to 100 per game. And, and the other option is, do you want the survivability? Do you want protection from your tracks from being tracked or your crew from being injured or being hit by artillery and being hit by HE shells? Because people will fire HE shells against this vehicle, especially... Uh, Vehicles that can get close to you and behind you, like a light, fast light tank. Okay, so that is the NC-70. Uh, I happen to know for a fact that this is pronounced Bliskawicka. You've got a four-member crew. This is the commander. The 
I guess that's the gunner. And the gear guy has got to be the driver <coughs> and the loader. So you're missing a radio operator. Often the radio operator skills are with the commander. Uh, but the radio operator situational awareness is the key skill that you're going to want to get. And you're probably going to have to put it on your commander. The other skills like repairs and firefighting, you're not going to get those added to the other uh crew because they already have it the other one's going to be signal boosting and relaying uh, for this type of vehicle probably not something that you're going to need uh, so chances are you're not going to have it on this vehicle okay so those are the characteristics there is a video that was released by wargaming where they showed it in action and they show how it does more damage at close range than at medium range and then at distant range based on the type of armor it has there are obviously two types of tank destroyers one is a heavily armored tank destroyer and one is a light armored tank destroyer and then you've got the super heavies like the e100 this is kind of in the middle it's light armor on the side it's got a moderate speed but it's not super heavy in terms of its armor, uh, which means it's, it's not going to be fast and it's not going to have super strong armor um, everywhere, universal. So they'll be able to hit you on that side, maybe with an HE round. I don't know if it still works since they nerfed it. So you're going to have to be wary about uh, people, because people are going to hit you from the side. You're going to have to be wary about people firing nice shots at you. And in terms of your outgoing shots, I don't, I don't think that this is going to be a popular vehicle in the game. But think about it. On a small map, you're probably going to do a lot more damage because you're forced to be close to the enemy and they're forced to be close to you. And it's often going to be light tanks and medium tanks. So on a small map like Ensk, and Himmelsdorf, this is probably going to do a lot more damage. On a bigger map like Malinovka and Prokhorovka, you're probably going to do um, less damage per shot with this type of vehicle. Um, okay, and there's really no way to control the map size. But if you wanted to do it, you could go into your maps and block out the large open field maps. The final issue is, as far as we know, there's going to be three tiers, which is going to be the 8, the 9, and the 10, which are going to have the mechanic of this type of shell. It's called Star Tray. I looked up Star Tray on the internet. There was no reference to any tank that had Star Tray ammo other than World of Tanks. And World of Tanks says it's unique to World of Tanks. And I looked up the NC-70 Bliskowika, and I did not find any reference to a tank under this name, although I did see a warship called the Bliskowika. Okay, so that's it for this vehicle. This is a super test, which means that they are playing it in-game. The volunteer players are playing it, and they are going to give their feedback, which I'm sure will be nothing special, uh, back to the game, and the soonest you're going to see it, if they rush it in-game, probably going to be three months from now. Or they could sit on it, and it could be years before this appears, but because it's a, a line of uh, tanks on a branch, uh, it's possible it's going to be coming this year, and it's possible that there will be a premium vehicle that has the same mechanic. Okay, so that's it for the NC-70 Bliska Wika. If you have any questions or comments, please post below. Also, these statistics are all subject to change and they're not final.